It appears to me that the older I get, the faster the seasons go, except for winter. Winter is the time of year when the days are shorter, the nights are longer, and the fishing opportunities to get out and bend a rod fall off with the temperature. So when a good friend called and asked what I was doing the next couple of days after a heavy snowfall, I responded quickly with, what do you have in mind? I had fished with Chris Jackson many times over the years in Western Mass, but never during the winter and certainly never after two feet of snow had blanketed the Berkshires. As we left the highways behind and made our way through the back roads to the drop-in spot, I couldn't help thinking of how eloquently the song Sweet Baby James captured the very essence of our trip and where we would be fishing today. The 1st of December was covered with snow. So was the turnpike from Stockbridge to Boston. Though the Berkshire seemed dreamlike on account of that frosting, but 10 miles behind me and 10,000 more to go. Fortunately for us, our trip in Cape Cod was just over 200 miles, and we would soon be back on the Deerfield River, fishing in the heart of winter with Chris Jackson. Just kind of slow roll it. She wants to go. It wants to go. The first time I did this, I almost lost a boat in the river. I was going to actually hit this tree, and if it hadn't hit this tree, it was gone. It was gone. <laughs> All right, that was easy and uneventful. Yeah, that was there was a little bit better footing under there than we thought. I'm excited to get started here. I can't believe the amount of snow. We have no snow on the Cape, none. Chris, I'll give you that. We can pop right. that on the other side. Let me pull that boat in for you. Try to keep your feet dry. You get the pole position. Thank you. No pun intended. <laughs> started here all right first spot these, here we go these wintertime fish they're kind of hanging out on the couch you know they're watching football uh, they're not gonna get off the couch for a piece of popcorn but if a pepperoni pizza goes by they're gonna get off the couch and eat so the softer water adjacent to the fast water that's kind of the couch that they're hanging out on so today our focus we're gonna avoid the really fast heavy water just on that soft seam, just gonna, inside? Yep, we're gonna be focusing on all these soft seams. We're getting spun around here. And uh, that's where the fish are gonna be. And some of them are gonna be in, in very shallow water, so. So one of the things, Chris, that I learned when we started fishing together, you know, going back 10 plus years ago, start in close and work your way out. So many anglers want to throw it right out to that seam, and all we're doing is throwing a line over where the over fish, the fish. There's There can be fish right at your feet, and this is even important steelhead fishing, where people will wade out almost chest deep, and then start fishing, and they don't realize that these fish come in really shallow to feed. They could be right here next to the boat. Because they're not working here. They're, they're not they're, working. They're, they can, this is the couch. This is the couch. That's the treadmill. That's the treadmill. And, and you know, they avoid the treadmill in the wintertime. Yeah. They want to stay on the couch. We're going to throw a, a big, heavy stone fly, and we're going to monkey around. I have a bunch of different stone fly types. And we've got a little, uh, so sort of like a little hot spot nymph uh, on the tag. And sometimes they're going to eat that. So we got a couple menu offerings for them. And so we're just fishing a, a rubber leg stone fly. We got a rubber leg stone right there. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to monkey around with the colors. Um, this one's got a little flash in it, but we'll see if they, we'll see if they want the flash. And we're going to, we're going to run that first. Just set that up. Yep. Fold the anchor. We're already drifting. Exactly, just let that run. And even shake out a little line now, Chris. Feed out a little bit. 
Yep, feed it a little bit. So we're doing a drift and I'm just staying on that seam right there. Yep, make that little mend, perfect. And that's gonna be critical today too, is just slowing down the pace of these flies. So that they're presenting naturally, like it's going down the stream and the, and the leader's not leading. Set, set, set. Got, Got him. There we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Good job, Chris. Right out of the gates. <laughs> you prepped me with right around there, and I wasn't sure if it was further back <laughs> here. And you called it, Chris, right on that corner. <laughs> right there. In that corner. I looked like a rainbow, though, didn't it? And we're in the beginning of February, kicking off the season. Chris Jackson, guide service, good friend, fished with him over the years. And what a beautiful fish. Look at the color yeah, on this guy. That's a nice I mean, bow. That's a quality fish right there. <laughs> oh, look how chunky that's a that is. fish to start <laughs> with. Yeah, and these fish have been eating really well. I'm going to get my hands wet. Good hook set on that one. Look at these flies out of the way. Look at that fish. Gorgeous. Cool that. That's a good way to start. Awesome. There he goes. getting in the kitchen come on let's see if someone wants to snack here all right so straight in not up great correct straight in and let's just go in a little bit further this time all right I'm gonna just take up a little here I'm gonna go back oh baby beautiful that's perfect couldn't be better and when it gets even with you then you're gonna make your mend yep is that too much for mend up above it or is that okay that's okay we're gonna let that roll I like where it is. Come on, show a little love. Men down or leave it? I would leave it. That oh, that almost felt like a rock again. I felt like I was That's like- That's okay. Could have, could have been. It's variable depth in here. There's a bunch of huge boulders and just set on everything, and you're gonna be pleasantly surprised that you're gonna rear back and it's gonna be a good fish. And I'm gonna row us back up. We're going to do uh, one last drift through this hole, and then we're going to move on. Nice. Wow, he is feisty. Yeah, he is. This guy is scooting. Everyone thinks the fish aren't frisky, but the water <laughs> coming out of the dam is, you know, it's like 34, 35 degrees coming out of this dam. That was That's awesome. not even a big one. That just came up. This guy, you left the couch a little bit. He was he getting did. up to get a beer. He thought it was a slice of pizza, and he's like, oh, this is a slice of pizza with a hook in it. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful wild brown. Oh, look at that. Now, Chris, were the browns pawed up like the rainbows, or, or were they're, they more lone wolves? They're lone wolves. They're, they're, they're like the apex predators. Let me get my hand wet. I'll let you take a look at these guys. Look at Look that, at the spots huh? on that fish. This Chris, is how old do you think this fish is? It's probably two years old. Look at the colors on that fish, huh? And off he goes. Woo! That's awesome. <laughs> what a start. This Guys, is... we haven't even gone 50 yards. I don't think we've gone 50 yards. We put it right here on the corner. Had an uh, indicator go down really on the first float. Wasn't ready for it. You know, I was expecting to have to move a little further. Went back over that spot, picked up a beautiful rainbow, and now just got a great brown trout. This is the upper catch and release area, and it really is a special place. This is like the epicenter of all the wild fish on, on this river. So we're gonna see, all, you know, quite hopefully quite a few of these wild brown trout today, but I mean, that was super cool. You guys just picked up 12, 14 inches of snow, and it's just gorgeous out here. I wanna get back up and see if there's any more lone wolves and brown trout along oh, that stretch. I don't think that's the last one for today. <laughs> we're gonna do that again. 
I haven't even left the first hole yet. Are you, is that crazy? Look at this edge here, huh? This whole thing is just beautiful, the way the snow is packed in on the trees and that ridge. Oh God, it's gorgeous. And you're on your natural side. This might be easier to cast, and then I'll spin the boat around. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw it now. How far out are we looking? Right to the edge of that fast stuff. Can you set this one? Oh, no, that works. Let's let that one go. All right there, come on. Got him? Yep. Good job. Now what I'm gonna try to do is start moving over towards this softer water to okay, the right. Okay, bring him over there. Yep, Let's see if, oh. oh, he's not having it. That's a good fish, Chris. He is not having it. All right, we're just gonna have to ride this out. See if you can get him on the reel. Yeah. There you go. And we'll just take our time and see, see where he wants to go. Chris just dropped the depth on this thing because we're in a different, area in the water and we just had a float he pretty much called that shot coming across and I actually saw this fish turn on it I saw the color of the fish turn on it he so is right now we're a little bit of a stalemate because he's in the rough water and we're gonna have to hopefully kind of take him out the back door and see if we can't get him into some softer water I'm gonna start working my way into this other soft pocket over here is that another brown it's not a huge fish but no, I think it's, it's a wild just, brown it's a wild brown and it just yep. They fight like hell. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, once I get that nose up, I'm gonna keep, I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger fish than this, the way that this fish hit and acted. Wow, look at the spots on <laughs> that fish. This fish. That's unreal. Look at the butter on that thing. Oh, oh, oh. Look at the spots. Like you said, not the biggest, but the color on this fish is gorgeous. Oh, oh, that was awesome. It was back in 2011 that I first joined Chris on the Deerfield for a fall drift trip. At the time, I had no idea how beautiful the scenery was that cradled this river. So wild and remote, it was easy to get lost in its beauty and its backdrop. More often than not, I found myself looking away from my indicator to the landscape, only to be brought back to the fishing with Chris yelling, set. As a tailwater fishery, the Deerfield offers year-round trout fishing. And although it was breathtaking to be drifting the river in the middle of winter with a fresh snow blanketing everything, there was no replacing my memories of fishing it in the fall. I would fished just over three months earlier with Chris when the foliage had painted the Berkshires with all the colors of autumn. And it was hard to believe it was the same water. The canvas was now white with a river cutting through it, but the fish were just as beautiful and the browns and rainbows were still feeding well. Set, set, got him. Got him. There we go. Gone were the leaves that dotted the river in fall, along with the tourists that descended on the Berkshires for leaf peeping. Long since closed for the season was a Hicks family farm corn maze we had visited in the fall, which has become a destination unto itself in the town of Charlemont. The farm and maze are both operated by an extended family now in their fifth generation of farming. And we had been fortunate to have received a tour of the corn maze by Joanne McLean, one of the members of the Hicks family just before Halloween. Every fall, the corn maze offers haunted weekends where families can traverse the maze under the cover of darkness. While there is no replacing the sheer beauty of fishing the Berkshires during the peak foliage of fall, the clean, simple allure 
of a winter drift down the Deerfield was a welcome change of pace. The season and conditions had certainly changed, but the opportunity to get out and bend a rod on open water in the middle of winter was captivating. We're probably going to pick up some fish real quick here. Perfect. Too far down? No, nope, that's perfect. And now you're in the kitchen. And then down and leave it. I would leave it. That? Oh, that almost felt like a rock again. It felt like I was. That's like... okay. Could have, could have been. It's variable depth in here. There's a bunch of huge boulders and just set on everything. And you're going to be pleasantly surprised that you're going to rear back and it's going to be a good fish. Okay, ready? Yep. Too far, bring it in. No, I like that. Let's try that one. Yeah, I like it. Right on the edge of the heavy stuff. Set. There he is. There he is. Another brown. Is it a brown? Yeah. Silvery looking brown. Oh yeah, it is. Yo. Oh. That's a nice looking fish. It's funny, at first turn, I thought that was definitely a rainbow. I did too. You know, it's crazy the different colors on these fish. You know, over the years, they've put several different strains of fish in here, and you can see, like, by their spot pattern, their yeah. coloration, they're, like, genetically unique from each other. Look at this guy up for the cameras. Look at that. It's another wild fish. It's got adipose fin right there. Very cool with that. That is awesome. I love the colors on it, and it's crazy. You were just talking about the different strains of these fish, but you look at the colors on this versus that one that we were just talking about, a slice of butter, and the red dots and everything that are in them. So Every one cool. of them is so unique, but just awesome. That fish fought hard for a little yeah, guy. Yeah, he really it's did. It's a little pipper, and he was battling. At first, I was just like, ah, oh, this is going to be a small rainbow. I'm going to just lock him up, and then all of a sudden, uh, he was having none of it. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Let's Woo. do that fish one more time. Oh, I, hell yeah. I don't know why. I feel like there's a few fish in that hole there. I agree with you 100%. They're, they're biting now. They're starting to chew. I think this is a good distance right here. I should go a little further in. A little in. closer. That's it, big mend. Perfect. This is where it should happen, right here. Come on. Make a little upstream mend. Yep. It turned out to be a beautiful day. Gorgeous, isn't it? Go a little closer in. Yep. Perfect. Get a mend on that. And right in here. 
I might have to make multiple men's do a set. Got him? Yeah, I do. Nice job. They're right on the bank, huh? They're right on the bank. Cause that, that went down and I wasn't prepared when that line was tied in there. That's a rainbow. Nice. Woo. Nice. I like that deep seam over there, Chris. That was awesome. Ooh, look at the colors matters. on that guy. Whoa. Quick release. Brother, nice. Nice job, Chris. Look at this down here. Look at this bowl that we're coming into. You know, and we have these shots of this, all the colors of autumn. And now you look at it and here we are in the winter and how gorgeous it is right now too. I'll go a little further to the right now. Yeah. Yep. Should I go up above that rock? No, no, no. Well, oh, yeah, sorry. Yep, yep, if you can. You're gonna get your bite right down here in about five feet. Set. How do you call that? Little rainbow. That's a welcome fish. It got a, <laughs> we had a little drought there. <laughs> yeah, we did. That sun came out and it felt good for us, but I don't know if the fish are digging it. I'll tell you what that's called. Knowing the area you fished, you're like, that's going to happen in about five feet. I think it was four feet and 10 inches. Get that guy in the water. My drifts down the Deerfield remain my favorite examples of fishing trips that don't hinge entirely on the fish. With many fishing seasons in my wake, I've learned over the years that the true magic of fishing is in its ability to bring good people together to share unique experiences on the water. The fish have always been just a good excuse to get out there and enjoy the outdoors. 